Hey guys, quick little video. So somebody was asking me a question about uh, a form processing code that they were trying to debug. So they were just capturing form information in an HTML form and they hit submit and then using a PHP and some JavaScript, they were capturing that form of information and they were checking to see if it was cool. If it was cool, they would redirect the user to another page. If it wasn't cool, they would reload the form, fill in the information the user already put into the form and prompted them to uh, fix the mistakes. So they ran into problems and I'm just gonna give you, give you a quick couple of tips about debugging these things. You gotta remember when you are writing code, whether it be the web stack or Python or Java, whatever, you will have uh, cascades in the error stack, if you will. What do I mean by that? If you have an error uh, near the top of the code, if you will, right? Somewhere in the beginning of the whole process in the function or, uh, well, we'll say it in the function. If you don't address that error at the top of the stack, it will likely create errors down, down the stack. So some people will make the mistake of trying to solve errors below that first error. You don't wanna do that because a lot of times that first error causes the other errors to occur where they would not occur otherwise. So you wanna address the top level error first and then you wanna work your way down the stack. That's why it is important, and I teach this in my courses, that you have to understand the way code is actually processed by the rendering engines at hand. Depends on the language, uh, depends if it's a strongly typed language like a Java versus JavaScript where it's processed at runtime, meaning when the code is actually run in the browser, in the case of JavaScript in the browser, it's run right there. Uh, whereas if you're using a compiled language like Java or C Sharp, you, you can get errors in the actual compilation process. So it kind of pre-screens your, uh, your code, if you will. So in the case of the web stack, you gotta remember whether it's HTML, CSS, or JavaScript, the code is processed from the top down. Same thing with technologies like PHP. If you got a PHP page, the PHP code will pro be processed from the top down. So if you have an error on line 10, it will cause an error. It could break code that otherwise would work on line 25 or on line 100. Uh, as an aside to that, if you're, uh, keep in mind, when you're, when you're writing code in real world, a lot of your time, if not most of your time, is spent debugging. So a quick tip there, a quick tip there to avoid bugs. You wanna keep your code very simple and very concise uh, so that it's easier to figure out where the bugs are. Anyway, going back to the whole point. point. So code is processed from the top down, just like you read a page in a, in a book. And so if you catch an error on line 10, it could break all kinds of things down the road, down the, uh, down the page, if you will, of code. So you gotta address those errors in the order of precedence in terms of how they are being processed by the code interpreter. So I hope that makes sense. The reason I bring this up in this quick little video is because when people are learning how to code, you can be overwhelmed where you have one little error. It could be like a simple little typo where you forget a semicolon in JavaScript or you forgot to, to indent your Python code properly, in the case of Python, because it uses indents to delineate blocks of code. So if you have that one little error on line 10, it could break all kinds of code below. So you're not, you gotta learn to deal with that hierarchy properly, because oftentimes, uh, as I said, you'll see errors on line 50 that's actually caused by something on line 10. Before I go on, I just want to point out if you're looking to level up your coding game. So let's say you've done my full stack course or my Python course, you've done your fundamentals, which means you're going to have real coding skills, whatever, whatever skill level you happen to be up and you happen to be at, unless you're a crusty old 169 uh, year old nerd like me. If, you're, if you really want to level up your game, you should learn something called refactoring. So I recommend this book. If you look under the video, You'll see that book, this book there. There's, this is a Java version. There's a JavaScript version. If you wanna level up your code, after you've done your fundamentals, done one or two little projects, this is what you wanna get, is this book, links below. This is gonna take you way faster than doing tutorials or 
code competitions or other nonsense like this. This is the book. This is going to level up your game. And if you're a total, and if you're a total beginner, then you want to get my book on web design. This is for total beginners. Um, again, links below. This is for HTML, CSS, and the web. You understand the whole web. When you learn to code, as anybody who knows who's writing code, you have to understand the environment. You have to understand the context. So, for example, if you're writing JavaScript code and for uh, the browser, where all, most of the JavaScript code is written, although you can do it on the back end with Express and Node, but if you're doing it in the web browser, you have to understand the web browser. You have to understand the web DOM. You have to understand the hierarchy of uh, how the code is processed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let me close off this video with a couple of points. When you do find errors popping up in your code, do not be afraid to take those errors and copy and paste them into Google and see what the interwebs can bring you in terms of uh, answers. This is part of the skill set as a developer. As I said earlier, you're going to spend probably most of your time in your career debugging. So have simple code, fine grained code, etc. And um, being able to navigate the interwebs in terms of figuring out what the errors might be is a good thing. Another thing you should try to get away from is um, when you have errors in your code, a lot of times they're typo errors. A lot of times they could be logical errors where you, I don't know, as a simple example, you, you have a conditional statement, an if statement, and uh, you put the greater than versus uh, less than bracket in the wrong direction. So you're wondering why your counter is going to, it's not working, going the opposite way. Uh, as a point of advice, uh, do not uh, paste huge chunks of code into forums. They expect people to, to debug your code. When you are dealing with um, bugs in your code, you should be good at identifying errors. That's why I tell people when you get code to work, break it, look at the error messages. So you start understanding error messages more. You start knowing what an error message really means, regardless of the language, whether it be JavaScript or Python. And you shouldn't, um, again, you shouldn't go out there and paste big blocks of code and expect people to hunt down your errors. If you have conceptual understanding issues, like why, you know, why are we using this an interface here? Or what's in an on anonymous inner function? Why would you call that? That's the type of question that's reasonable and it's within nerd etiquette, if you will, to ask that kind of question. But not, here, here's my code. Can you please debug it for me? You're not going to get people helping you too often. That's, it's unreasonable, right? That's something you have to learn to figure out yourself. Again, most, most bugs are either um, typos or they could be um, just logical errors on your part. You know, some bugs are, are, are structural, you know, but at the end of the day, anyway, that's the advice. All right. Thanks for watching the video. Hope it was helpful. Uh, links below if you're interested in any of my courses and the books I talked about. Ciao.